1663, a mathematician named James Gregory realized that with accurate observations of the transit of Venus across the Sun, we can use what we know about planetary motion, parallax, and simple geometry to measure the distance from the Earth to the Sun, and in turn, all other distances in our solar system. Since we know that r cubed over t squared for the Earth is the same as r cubed over t squared for Venus, and we can express the distance from the Earth to the Sun as the distance from the Sun to Venus plus the distance from Venus to the Earth, we can express Kepler's third law as such. We know how long it takes the Earth to revolve around the Sun. We know how long it takes Venus to revolve around the Sun. And we know that using parallax, we can measure the distance from Venus to Earth, leaving us with an equation with only one unknown, the distance from Venus to the Sun. And having that distance, we can find the distance from the Earth to the Sun. In 1716, roughly 40 years before the predicted 1761 and 1769 Venus transits, Edmund Halley called upon the scientific community to do whatever it took to observe the transit. For the sake of science, for the sake of truth, Delayed by the war-torn Indian Ocean, Guillaume Le Gentil was at sea during the 1761 transit. He then endured eight years of terrible weather and attacks by offensive warships, only to be clouded out on the day of the 1769 transit. A few hours after Dixon and Mason left Portsmouth, England, the HMS Seahorse was attacked by the French. Eleven dead and 37 wounded, they returned to England only to be sent back out to try again. Because of the delay, they only made it as far as Cape Town, but to everyone's surprise, they recorded excellent observations of the transit. Jean-Baptiste Chep de Terroche made it across the quickly melting Volga River, warded off hordes of peasants that thought he was a demon who brought on their recent bad weather with his bizarre instruments, and finally, on the day of the transit, collected excellent data. He was sent to Jose del Cabo for the 1769 transit, where, after recording good data, Jean-Baptiste, the entire village, and all but three of his expedition died of fever. These three survivors were the only hope of returning the data back to France. Finally, after two of the remaining Frenchmen died at sea, the data was brought back to France in the hands of just one man. Alexandre Guy Pingré was met with rain on the day of the transit. Father Maximilian Hell made very good observations of the freezing cold Vardo, Norway. John Winthrop collected the proper data despite swarms of biting insects. And Neville Maskelyne only saw clouds through his telescope. In 1771, a Frenchman named Jerome Leland collected and analyzed the data of these brave scientists. And it was found that the distance between the Earth and the Sun was 153 plus or minus 1 million kilometers. Granted, their number was about 3.4 million kilometers off of today's known figure, which, if I can recall, is 149,597,000 kilometers. Still, you gotta hand it to them. And it wasn't even like this information was particularly useful in the 1700s. You couldn't use the distance from the Earth to the Sun to invent a cool new toy or simulate cheese without actually having to touch a cow. It was purely for knowing. It was an international collaboration to answer a question so simple a child might have asked it. Scientists gave their lives for this cause. All they wanted was some truth.